Yo Yo Tom Moje uh, back at you with uh, part four of this infographic tutorial on working precisely in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, here we've got ourselves a sort of a knob or a dial, something that looks a little bit analog, something that would communicate to a customer concepts such as uh, controls or uh, options or adjusting uh, adjusting dials. That's the one. <clears throat> Basically, uh, what we want to try to do here is create as precise a dial as we can uh, in as few steps as possible. Because when doing infographics, we really don't want to spend a lot of time uh, making them look fancy, but we do want to communicate exactly what it is. So, the minimum number of strokes and elements to make that thing work. And of course, everything has to be as precise as possible. Uh, so here we've got uh, basically a shape combined with a couple of circles, uh, some lines around the edges to create the the increments on the dial, and then a kind of a semi-fancy uh, knob indicating the position of the dial. All right, so I'm just going to start over again by uh, deleting the shape and starting with a new document, 500 pixels by 500 pixels. View. Show bounding box is turned off, smart guys is turned on, and away we go. Let's start by doing the central circle using the ellipse tool. And again, start from the center, option and shift, or alt and shift on the PC, and let's drag out. And this one we're going to sort of eyeball. Might be interesting to, once we get a size that looks roughly right, with a fill of, of black and a stroke of none, let's just pop into the transform and see if there's any numbers that are kind of close to the size that we've chosen. So I'm looking at the width and the height here, and I'm seeing 200. Let's just see what 200 would look like. Not that we're going to necessarily need measurements, but it'd be nice to be able to work with some nice round numbers. Yeah, I think 200 is going to work just fine here. So let's go with 200. Uh, it's just going to make our life easier when it comes to making decisions around sizes and stuff. Just having a round number is going to be very helpful. Uh, let's see that in action right now. We're going to create sort of uh, the knobby edges of the dial by creating another circle. That circle is going to be anchored up here in the top anchor point of this circle here. So again, Option and Shift or Alt and Shift on the PC and drag outward and uh, eyeball it for now. And then once again, let's pop into Transform and just see if there's a number that's close. So I'm seeing 25 or 50. Let's just see. 50 might be a little on the large side. Yep, so we're going to go with 25. Yee, it's a little small. All right, let's just stick with 25 and see where it leads us. All right, so we've uh, got that shape. Now we need to step and repeat it all the way around here. Dragging is not going to cut it. That's just not the way we roll. So we're just going to use the rotate tool. R on the keyboard brings up the rotate tool. In order to rotate this around the circle, we need to rotate it around the center part of the circle. So with the uh, circle, smaller circle selected and the rotate tool active, I'm going to move down to, and highlight the center until with smart guides turned on, it does say center. It highlights that. And so we're going to hold down the option key or the alt key on the PC and click on the center. And that's going to bring up the rotate dialog box. Make sure preview is turned on. Just looking at the increments now, uh, so that's 45 degrees. That's probably a little bit more than we want in terms of an increment. Uh, so any number uh, that divides nicely by 360 is going to work. So that gives us the option of 20 degrees. Uh, 30 degrees is another one that works. 15 degrees is another one that works. I'm liking 20 degrees at this point, given the size of that object. And so, with uh, of course, the preview turned on, we only see where it's going to move to. Uh, we're going to hit the copy button and leave the original copy behind. That looks like a perfect offset to me. So, now the nice part is Control D or Command D on the Mac will reproduce those. We'll do that just enough times to get it all the way around. So, there's our circular shape. We're going to select this whole thing and group it for posterity. All right, now we need to throw in the uh, the knob. So we're just going to use a single segment and draw from the center. This time we're going to just draw with the shift key held down to draw straight up. We want to probably go just a little bit beyond. Actually, let's just stop here and see where that takes us. We can always extend that afterward by using the direct select tool. So we've actually anchored it right to the outer edge of the circle. Um, we're not going to see a heck of a lot until we throw a stroke on here. So we're going to just pop into the stroke palette, or sorry, pop into the color palette with the stroke selected and choose black. And then in our stroke, we're going to just pop that up. So I'm not seeing much because we're, of course, working on black. We do want the corners of the shape to be rounded. So I'm going to turn the caps on. I'm going to keep going. That does look like it's probably going to need to be extended a little bit. 
setting the weight to 50 seems a little overkill to me so I'm gonna bring it down a notch here to let's go with 40 and then I'm gonna use the direct select tool and just selecting that single point using my nudge key to bring that up a little bit and I'm holding down the shift key and the arrow keys pressing up on the arrow key to move that up a little bit alright so we've got our indicator and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that very same segment and we're gonna create a copy of that segment actually we're not gonna create a copy we're gonna use the appearance palette which is a nice little tr trick we can do here that I covered in one of the other tutorials bring up the appearance palette we're gonna create a second stroke on this shape so all we need to do in the appearance palette is go to the flyout menu and say add new stroke that creates a second stroke over top we want this stroke to be white because that stroke starts off being identical to the previous stroke it sort of replaces that stroke but now what we're going to do is we're going to come down in size say let's come down to 20 points and by clicking on the underlying part of the word stroke bring up the stroke palette and we're just going to go back off of uh, the rounded cap and go back to a straight cap create just a little bit of a different effect there okay 20 point or maybe 15 point ah 15 point beautiful okay so there we go that's our that's our knob shape we're gonna leave it straight up and down we'll adjust the angle of that in just a minute uh, in the meantime so just make sure let's group all that together because that'll make it easier to rotate that later on and away we go so now what we want to do is we want to create the uh, the dashes around the outside to show the uh, position and to sort of get that started we're gonna start again in the center point of the shape Right now it's, gonna, it's not going to say center because there's a bunch of things over top of it. It's going to say anchor, so that's fine. Click and we're going to drag straight downward to about here. And I uh, need to set my stroke to black. So that should be done real quick. There we go. So we don't really want this to be all the way to the center of the object. So we're just going to grab that point after the fact. Click on it and drag it with the shift key held down until we get, yeah, maybe nudge it a little bit and away we go alright this should be really simple we're going to take that shape with the dirt with the, uh, the solid arrow tool the move tool click on that press V on your keyboard click on it and then we're going to switch over to the rotate tool we're going to move our mouse back to that center point we can keep using it if you're not convinced that that's the center point you can always temporarily switch to outline mode and you'll see that as a nice little X beautiful I'm going to option click when you have the rotate tool selected option clicking brings up the di rotate dialog box exactly what we want to do so option click now it's up to us do we want to use the same increments as we did for the knob or we want to use something different I'm gonna go with 30 degrees just to sort of switch it up a bit and again we're gonna press copy and duplicate that all the way around alright back to preview mode there it is so last step just select our shape good thing we grouped it beforehand and then uh, we don't want to use the free transform tool here uh, because this shape is actually not centered anymore. I mean, the shape is centered, but because it's taller in this aspect, if we rotate it, it's going to rotate a little bit. See that center point's kind of swiveling around. So that's not going to cut it for us here. In terms of working precisely, you've got to be aware of these little nuances. So we're just going to switch over to the rotate tool once again. And this time with the rotate tool, you know, we're not going to hold down the option key, but we're only going to click on that anchor which represents the center point to set down the angle of the center of rotation and now we can click anywhere outside here click and drag and we can freely drag it to whatever position we want just to show whatever position is on the dial if you do want it to happen to line up with one of these notches no problem uh, smart guys is going to allow us to measure the intersection and away we go look at that giddy up